When you hear the word stream SMP, what is the first thing that pops into your mind? Perhaps it's a certain character, battle, a specific arc, or maybe even a quote or just one moment that stands out to you. But I'm willing to bet that regardless of what you think of, most of you, myself included, think about the Dream SMP through the perspective of fan art. I mean, there's a reason that millions of fans see this instead of just this. But one artist in particular stands out from the rest, and their name is Saddest. Now if you clicked on this video, I'm sure that you are already familiar with who Saddest is. As one of, if not the most famous Dream SMP fan artist, her animations have gained millions of views, with her YouTube channel now over 2 million subscribers. But why, out of all the artists and animators, did Saddest become so popular? Well, by the time she uploaded her first Minecraft animation, Saddest was already an established YouTuber, with over 100,000 subscribers from their short Undertale, Hamilton, and Hollow Knight animations. But something you may not have known or realized is that her first Minecraft-related video wasn't actually about the Dream SMP, but rather an animation of a scene from Dream's Minecraft Manhunt series. Uploaded in June of 2020, it is still to this day their most viewed video. But this, as we all know now, was just the beginning. Two months later, Sadis released the Dream SMP War animatic, which changed the game forever. This dramatic, fast-paced vision of the Dream SMP was an instant hit with longtime fans, new viewers, and even the content creators themselves. It gave you just enough to keep you intrigued while still not giving too much away about the story. It also added a visual and emotional depth to the characters that we couldn't necessarily get from just watching Minecraft gameplay, especially since not every content creator used a webcam or even streamed. But one of the biggest reasons as to why this animatic worked so well was because of how it was structured. Instead of animating a single clip or scene, she gathered some of the most iconic lines and put together what was essentially a trailer for the Dream SMP. For me, this was the moment it became more than just a Minecraft role-playing server. Sadis was able to capture the characters in a way that made the stories come to life. But thankfully, it didn't stop there. With each new animation, Sadist has taken their techniques and drawing skills to the next level. It's easy when comparing that first animatic to her newer ones how much she has improved as an artist. Her designs are much sharper, and the way she uses shadows and light give her newest animations more dimension. Not that their earlier work was bad by any means, but it's extremely impressive considering how much more polished their latest animatics are. I think another key factor in her success is Sadis' unique style of animation. Compared to some other artists, her illustrations aren't necessarily that detailed, with her signature monochromatic style and relatively simple but highly praised character designs. But rather than making their drawings extremely complex or cartoonish, they wisely put an emphasis on the action. Sadis' animations stand out because of how fluid and realistic the movement is. It's easy to follow, and you can tell that she took the extra time to make sure everything looks just right. Dream getting caught by the fishing rod in the duel, or Technoblade's rebirth after the Totem of Undying are just two examples of Sadis' more elaborate animations that she absolutely nailed. Sadis' use of pacing is outstanding as well, building the energy slowly until it crescendos in each animation. This is amplified by their editing and choice in music, to generate a more powerful emotional response. Dawn of the Sixteenth showcases this effect very well, with each cut and even the movements of characters corresponding to a beat in the song. The way that she also mimics camera movements, such as pulling focus between characters or the backdrop, creates something that feels almost cinematic, and it leaves you wanting more. It's hard to imagine the Dream SMP without Saddest, but it's even harder to grasp the full impact they've had in the community. From all the other fan artists inspired by her work, to even my own thumbnails and videos, Saddest has undeniably had a huge influence on the entire Dream SMP fandom. But exactly how far does that influence reach? Now, there are many reasons why the Dream SMP has been so successful, mainly all the time and dedication the content creators have put into crafting their characters and stories. But Saddest, along with all the other artists, has also played a significant role in the SMP's popularity. And I would speculate has even influenced some of the creators themselves in their storytelling. Some of the most iconic quotes are forever cemented in Dream SMP history by her animations. And it's enjoyable to see the content creators react along with the fans, and recognize how much of an impact Saddest has had on the Dream SMP. 
please leave a like and comment which saddest animation is your favorite, and make sure you subscribe to Saddest and any other animators you enjoy watching to support their channel. And hit that subscribe button if you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.